Are you voting in the next elections? Yes, yes, I'm voting. Have you voted before? Yes, I voted 2021. It was an you're... exciting moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how old were you then? The ANC cannot play a role of spoon feeding people all the time. Mm. It's very unfair for the to the ANC to say that you must that you must spoon feed us all the time. They have done fairly well in addressing the the, the, the previous imbalances of this country through the RTP programs. The, the, I'm, I'm, I'm against the narrative that everything that is failing and falling apart on the ground and on the ground, it's largely uh, on the ANC's hand. It's very important to vote here because we don't want a black person to govern the Western King. Very simple for the DA to say that. Yeah. And for a voter to say, and it's true, I can't afford. If you were to score the IEC on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of performance, 10 being amazing, 1 being a total failure, what is your, what is your, your score? I would say 4. 4 is it fail? It's fail. Actually, it's 3. Yeah. Not, not even 4. King King David Studio Podcast. Election season is in full swing, if you're not aware. That South Africa has elections coming I saw the president uh, saying uh, he's going to, he was uh, in a, some ANC function in KZN and he said uh, uh, the elections are coming, but he's going to speak to the president uh, to ask him, when are the elections? I said, yeah, well, no, we are this is serious because <laughs> he needs to recognize that this is an important time in, our, in, the South, Africa, in, in South Africa, in our history. And I managed to, to, uh, to get hold of a young person because it always makes me wonder which vote are young people thinking of? Uh, or are they even thinking of elections at all? Because that's a question that a lot of people will always ask. Uh, and we've noticed that there's been a, a drop in interest over the years. The younger, uh, the older you get, your kids are coming up and they become of, uh, eligible to vote and they don't vote. Uh, but I noticed in the last uh, a voter registration, there was an uptake, quite a high number. And uh, IEC says it's young people who came in numbers. Maybe there's an interest, or is there? So I managed to get hold of uh, Olungelo Mabulu. I met Olungelo. Actually, let's talk about when we met, Otiak. Okren. Um, it's sharp. Let's talk about when we met. He's 22, by the way, and he's voting. He'll tell you which political party he's going to vote for and why. Where did we meet? Remind me. We met at Poison's Hotel. Um, Beachwood Hotel mm. in 2019. At the time, I was the president of Katlaung Technical School of Specialization and also a district president of Ekorulene South and also the public relations officer of Gauteng RCL. What is all that? It sounds so so big and important. You were president of uh, SRC? At school level. At school level. Then at district level, you know, today we have districts. Uh, Kurulen South District, uh, Kurulen North. Mm. I was also a president at district level of RCL. Yeah. Then I was also a public relations officer of Gauteng RCL overall. What got you interested in student politics at a young age? You were how old at the time? I think I started I started in politics at the age of 14 when I got into high school. Uh, I was first introduced to politics through COSAS. Okay. After the, 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 the Red Party, which is led by Tate Julius Malema, mm where they were very much vocal and radical in parliament. I, I like that energy because it reminded me of what I used to read, of, of the 1976 generation mm -hmm. and what we had we had read at school, studied social science and history and all those things. So seeing that thing live happening in parliament and that radicalness, being, seeing it live, so made me interested in politics. So I joined COSAS. Mm. From the causes as programs of saying we must contest RCL, you know, governance, because because is a political organization. So we had to contest governance and find space and sit in SGPs mm. so that we can represent the views of students. So that's how it all started. What did you find at that level uh, as the disconnection between young people and, and and adults, particularly in those SGB settings? It's the interest. Mm. If you sit in those SGPs, all they are, they are worried about was what budgets and how the image of the school looks are outside of the school setting, forgetting mm. the, 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 the majority of the stakeholders which happen to be students. Much of the, much of the things which were discussed at SGP level were not issues that were affecting students. Mm. At the time, we had a poor nutrition, students who didn't have uniform, but budget is there, but they are not assisting. What were they saying? There, there will be a number of issues in different occasions. Yeah. But fortunate enough, 
me when I entered and setting those SGPs at the time, because when I became president, I had an amazing principal, uh, Oparman. He, he was a white person. He's a white person. Even now, he's still a principal there. He tried to change things around. But before him, the school was a disaster. It was a messy infrastructure. You would spend half of the period going around looking for a chair and a table which was what things which were supposed to be discussed at SGP level, but they were not being discussed in those meetings. Mm. So you could tell that there was a need for us to, to launch a revolution and to be in the forefront of leading the struggle and represent the views of students. You seem to attribute uh, much of the success of the change in that school during your time yes. uh, to leadership, not only yours, but that of, of the school. Yes, yes. Uh, the, prin the principal was very solid, so and clear with what he was supposed to do. But I, I, I strongly believe it was mainly supported by the pressure he had because he's a white person leading a school which is situated a Lukshin. And predominantly, naturally, predominantly 100% black. Obvious. Yeah. Uh, he tried to bring in three people who are of his color when he was already in. But before he came in, there was no white person. Mm -hmm. There were only three or four colors who happened to be teachers not even at SMT or SGP level. Mm. So he had the pressure to prove himself that he is capable and equal to the task. And he outdid himself even now when you go to the internet and search the school. It's brilliant. It has swimming pools, tennis court. And it didn't amazing. have that. It didn't have that. Wow, that's amazing. And, and the support of the community, do you find that schools, because sometimes schools are, not sometimes, schools are built within a community. Do you find that there's community participation in, in the, what happens to the schools? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the communi community participation in, in our case was very, very much because it's situated in Nala, particularly in Nala and Goba. Mm -hmm. And activism there is very strong. The ANC there is, is very strong in ensuring that it has, uh, it, it involves itself in, in programs that are happening at school level. At the time, the councillor was Macy at that ward. Mm -hmm. she, she was constantly ensuring that she partners with the school whenever she implements programs. Mm. So the, the community was very supportive. There was this one time they went to come and do a, a raid, a search okay. for drugs and all those things. Okay. But because of they didn't do it properly, we said, no, no, guys, you should have consulted us as courses because we are not prisoners here, we are students. So you coming here during class time and searching us of drugs, you are not taking us serious. There are mm. people who are, who, are illegal, who are illegal drug sellers out there, but we are coming here. So we had to chase them out. But what they were doing was good. But because of they didn't consult us, who happened to be the office <laughs> of students, we said, no, we are contesting this thing. Why wouldn't you, logically, you realize what they were doing was, was the right yeah, thing? it was the right thing. It's just their approach was The wrong. approach was not okay. Yeah. And again, you can't leave real criminals who are selling drugs to, to learners in the streets where you sit, then come to school and look for those drugs in schools, whereby you left them in the corner. Mm. It doesn't really add up. You must start there by in, in those corners, in those houses where they sell drugs, raid them enough, then say, oh, well, what we are doing now, we are going to schools. If you still find drugs there, we are going to show you flames. If they had approached you before they arrived, would you have allowed them? Yes, we would have allowed them and we would have made sure that we accompany them in, class, in all those classes so that they don't do wrong things like manhandling students. True. Because there they they would be students who will resist and they will be manhandled harshly. Mm -hmm. And at, at the end of the day, they will be questioning us, what are you as a student leader doing? Mm -hmm. Seeing strangers, because those people were not people of authority. They were just strangers who, 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 who had the best interest of the community at heart. Mm -hmm. So it was going to create a, a bit of a commotion in that regard. What type of environment did you leave behind when you now left high school and now you're going... Uh, to tertiary level, what type of environment did, did you leave behind? It was a well-functioning school. All was well because uh, it had it, it was in the process. Uh, MEC, um, Premier Yusuf was the MEC at that time. Mm -hmm. He had just launched to, uh, it to being a school of specialization. Yes. So things were, were, were slowly enrolling in K53 programs were starting to happen, uh, aeronautics and all those things starting to become a paperless school. Mm. Uh, whereby one student, one tablet, so remember the slogan, I, one, uh, one class, mm. one smart board. I'm a smart board, yes. all of that. So those things were rolling in slowly but surely. Mm. There was not much of a complaint, even the uniform was changing. It was, you would say it's a model school or a Ivy League school, you know those Ivy mm. schools. Mm, with it blazers. Gave, yeah, I gave those vibes. I think when I met you wearing a blazer. You remember very well, yes. <laughs> That was all his work because he said, brah, you are the president now uh, with the assistant of Mr. Kankos who was like, brah, you are the president now. Make sure you get a blazer there. Mm. So <laughs> those are the things. They they made sure, Hori, we, we appear as a school that is of quality is, is of quality rather than quantity. So, and progressive. And progressive. Yeah. It, just, it, it didn't just sell an image. It made sure the image you see, it's the actual image that is, is happening within the school. And this school of specialization, what is that? 
It's aeronautics and it's, it's more... Oh, aeronautics is, is, is aeroplanes yes. and, and engineering of, of aeroplanes. Yes, it's yeah. around those things. Yeah. Because they, it's a technical subject. It's more or less around, around that, that science of mm. aeronautics and planes and all those things. Okay. But because my stream was commerce, I was not much vested in understanding what's happening there. Yeah. Because I was at the time I was really not a fan. I was more, if you remember very well, our first sitting at uh, at Radio Two Thousand. Mm. I told that I wanted to be an economist, so I was not mm. really much interested in those things of aeronautics. So it's along those lines. What are your ambitions now? My ambitions now. Things change over of time. Yes, yes. You're a young person. Yeah, I'm a young person. You're allowed to change a hundred times it, uh, yes. until you are a hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm really much interested in, in strategic communication and marketing. Okay. And one of those reasons I'm now interested in strategic communication is because of what is currently happening in the country. Mm. A lot of information, it's out there, but it doesn't reach our people, the poorest of them all. Mm. Even if it reaches them, it doesn't reach them in a manner that they would understand that information. Mm. The packaging of the information is not well structured and well articulated for a young person to be able to easily find interest in interacting with that information. Mm. For instance, issues of funding, issues of, of initiative and programs that are out there to uplift young people. Communication around that is not effectively communicated to young people. So communication is very important in, in, in assisting to build a country. Mm -hmm. Because if we, are, we, are, we have an informed society, you have a, a blessed society because they will know where they are going from here moving forward. Mm. So which is what this country is now missing. Hence, an, a, anyone can come in and say whatever and young people will follow because they are, they, they are not being given credible information. Propaganda has become the order of the day. But if you're able to see that, surely young people should be able to see that for themselves. You're not particularly any different from them. Not all young people are fortunate to have a, a, an upbringing and a background like mine of being of undergoing structures such as COSAS, being part of the MTM structures, whereby every now and then form mm -hmm. sessions and read policies and document, articulate constitution, be familiar with police and not uh, be lazy to read these policies. These policies are tricky. Uh, section what what. So when the moment I say section, you're like, eh, hey, but Khalil. Mm. So not all young people are fortunate at the age of 14, 15 to read those things, mm. to be familiar with the, the terminologies of policies. So so you're saying out of that, that interest, because yes. that's self-interest, that's yes. you being yes. interested. Yes. It's not fortune, it's decision. Yes. Yes. Um, you decided uh, don't you think there's also room for young people to be motivated in that direction? And I'm not talking politics. I'm yeah. talking being interested. But, you know, my my interest to to to, to liking all these things and uh, reading, it was mainly because of causes. It was a necessity for you to be informed mm. in order for you to get into a meeting, a meeting and argue and get your point across. True. Are young people having things like that that will direct them to have such interests? Because now all we do is to sit in studio, try and make beats so that we can be the next I'm a piano artist. Mm, there mm. is no way in a, a, a piano artist would say you must have an interest of reading. Mm, so mm. it also depends on, on, on the kind of environment you are in. Where does it direct you? Where does it challenge, channel you to when it comes to your interests? Describe young people today from your perspective. Young people have... Uh, uh, have become ignorant young people. Mm. Young people have been caught into the culture of following trends. As you can see, in this country, in this country we are confronted with a serious pro problem of a, a activists of trends. Mm. If something is, 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 is on Twitter and is trending, young people are going to be activists on, on that. They are going to comment on that. They are going to rally behind that. Mm. After a week or two, they are, they are on to the next one. They go back to their normal lives of having fun, of enjoying themselves as if there is no tomorrow. Mm. So th that's the young people we are confronted with, with South, in South Africa. But there's, there's also a young people who is, is caught up in a, in a reality that doesn't give them access or hey, access to, to technology. Yes. So that young person is not exposed to those trends. That young person is, is living a very different life experience. And what about that young person? Because you, you, what you describe mm. is, a, is an urban young person. Yes. A, an urban young person, in numbers, they're not as many as you think they are. So what do you think about the other young person who is caught up in, in a sad reality of what, we, we, what is called the digital divide? Mm. He doesn't have access to these digital things that you think they do. So for, for those ones, it goes back to 
to the education system we have in South Africa? Uh-huh. How is it structured? Is, is it making these young people to be interested in, in things outside of the curriculum that they are being given on a yearly? Mm-hmm. If not, what, are, what, what is it that is expected from them? What is it that they are supposed to do when they are not at school? What is it that they must find interest in if they are not at school? Mm-hmm. A number of these young people we are describing are clueless about anything. Even when it comes to books, our, our books which are, are meaningful, political literature, mm-hmm. poetry, it's, it's, it's only a few who will find interest. And those ones will find interest in reading these things that are, are educational. It will be because there will be a certain teacher that will say, I think you, you can like this thing. Mm-hmm. Here is a book, read it and come back for more if you liked it. Mm-hmm. You see that young person didn't just wake up and decide that I will read a book, but there was a teacher who saw a need for this person. He who saw potential in this young person mm-hmm. to, to, to give her that book or him that book. So it's it's it, it's always channeled by someone. There's always someone or something that will make you have an interest in a certain thing. You raise two po- points, very important. Someone, yes, because that person can come from anywhere. anywhere. It could be a teacher, an uncle, a father, a mother, the society. Yes. Uh, another person is another part of of your statement is the education system. Yes. You you are you literally just walked out of that education system very recently. Yes. The lower level education system. What do you have to say about it? In tr- in trying not only to conscientize but also to get this young person interested in what's happening around them. The education system of South Africa, base in at basic level, at even at at tertiary level, it it has been designed in a way that Elena should focus on one thing. They put those things. Mm. That's how the education system has been structured. It has not been structured in a way that will make young people to have, to find interests which are outside of the curriculum. Mm. Hence, today we are confronted with a high number of unemployed graduates, with a high number of young people who are not employed, who are not economically active because the education system which they have been fed says to them, you need to study so that you can go to school. After varsity, you need to find a job. It doesn't say you need to start your own thing. You need to be an entrepreneur. These are conversations which are starting now. Mm. As they can see, or the education is no longer the key to success anymore. It's hard for education alone to open doors for you. Of course. But if the education system of South Africa was able to equip you with social skills of interacting with different persons, we wouldn't be confronted with all these issues we are confronted with as South Africans. So in summary, it doesn't, it doesn't favor the poor and the working class. Mm, this education. At, at all. Yeah. I, I've heard other people arguing that private education is better. Uh, the IEB uh, mm. uh, uh, curriculum. It's why the same thing. I know a whole lot of young people who went to all these private multiracial schools who, 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 whom, whom we live within the location. A number of them are still seated home having gap years, uh, not finding a school, not even finding employment. Mm. Those who are fortunate to, to to matriculate in these private institutions and go directly to workplaces because of their their families are well off, they were able to be placed in strategic places. Mm. So both private and public education, it's one and the same thing. The only difference becomes if you are having a family that will be able to channel you and place you in strategic places. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, now let's let's go to to the setting, the family setting, society setting. Yes. Uh, because you're saying education is one side. Now, someone must see you, like I saw you, yes, yes. and say, Antoine is not bad. <laughs> and that's what you said. <laughs> Antoine is not bad. Someone must must do that. So what do you say to the society that this young person is, is, is born into? Because we find things like this. And I, I like the, the way you said it. A teacher, someone must spot and say and help you. And, and it's not even help. It's direct you. Give you a book. Yes. And hope that you'll read it and come back and then need, need to discuss for, for two minutes and then give you another one. Our, our society doesn't seem to be like that. If it was, we would have different results. Yes. What do you say to that? Because bo- kids are born into that society. You know, our, as black people, we have lost our ways. We have lost this thing of it takes a village to raise a child. Where did that thing go? Mm. People have became self-centered. Yeah. People have become selfish. If it doesn't involve you or it doesn't affect you now, it doesn't. it's not your problem. That's where we lost it. The least you can do as a person who is well off, whether you are a nurse, whether you are a doctor, or whoever who appears to have made it in, 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 our, in, in our setting, 
the least you can do is to come once in a while and just chill with anyone, with those young boys who are sitting at the Just engage with them, just pick on them and start any topic and see amongst those five young people who are seated there, you'll see one person who understands this thing mm. and try to engage with him at the, on, 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 on the sidelines and try to get where is, she, where is he going? What does he want? And take it from there. Mm. But I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say save the world, but the least you can do is to share information, interact with young people. Because what we are seeing with these people who, with these black people who are, uh, who, who are uh, the black middle class now, who live in these flats, who come into Liluk Shin, Mabawa Zobonu Mama, or Rukoko, once in a while. They just come, they're driving their fancy cars, Shama, Pibi, Poya Flexa. That's the definition of, of success for us. And leave it there. Mm. What is it that you are bringing back to the community? You can't subject people to the same struggle as you went through. Mm. The least you can do is to say, I will offer my time. That's what we have lost as, our, as the people. All they know is to come in, but chuma I see, but I'm happy, just relax. Mm. It's, it's not working. Kamachi 200. Kamachi 200. I say, Valenja Rakul. Bloman, I'm saying a light too. Bloman on Tanga, Umu is a Kamban. If his story makes sense or he has passion, a lot of young people in the location are passionate and are talented. Mm. All they need is to be heard and directed to the right direction. I, I know someone who does this there. Mm. You always say this in your show, but I, I once channeled someone there. Mm without expecting anything. That's the least you can do. Yeah. Let's go back to our old ways. Are you voting in the next elections? Yes, yes, I'm voting. Have you voted before? Yes, I voted 2021. It was 2020. an exciting moment. <laughs> yeah. you, how old were you then? I was, uh, I think I was 19. Yes. yes, yes. And uh, why was it exciting for you? <laughs> it was my first time voting. Yes. And over the years, I've been assisting with campaigns. And when it's time for me to get inside that tent, they would, I would know, hey, I can't vote. So it would hurt me. Oh, you are assisting, but you can't participate. I can't participate. vote. Yes. So like, hey, at the time, I have a feeling you vote, and it's also a I have a feeling you're the type that had a camera. You were straight. <laughs> that shot your ballot. Evidence. And you are not supposed to do that. No, but mine is not a secret. <laughs> That's the thing. Oh, yours is not a secret. Mine is not a secret. It's very clear. Your vote is clear. Yeah, my vote is clear. It's not a secret. Yes. yes. And, and in, in that elections, with all the excitement, and, and, and take me to that day for you. So the build up towards that day, we are sitting in you know, 57, mm. uh, Ekuruleni, 53 in Ekuruleni. Konja, where are you from? I'm from Ekuruleni. Yeah. Uh, 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 in, in the east. Eden Park. Okay. Uh, Begel, okay. They call it Eden Park West. Yeah. Uh, what 53 led by Councillor Mzianda. Uh, the build up towards those elections is similar, uh, the similar process like now, assisting young people, making sure young people register to vote. Doing door to doors, the Lamachi takes my feet. Some is your register. I remember at some point I had a stack of IDs in my room mm -hmm. because I'm much it was lazy to register online and the system was a bit lazy. So I'm like, give me your ID, I'll register for you. Yeah, my dot. So like, is that even allowed? <laughs> no, it's more like I'm an IC, 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 IC agent. agent yeah. I'm not voting for you, I'm just registering. You're registered, you. that's true. Give me your home address, your cell number. Or I'll, I'll, yeah, give me your cell number, home address. I will register for you. Mm. They give me their IDs. I scan All you need is, is... Yeah, I have yeah. a smartphone. Scan the ID. Nah. Yeah. Post. Tell, the, tell him, brah, give me the OTP, the PIN, the Angstrand Eleven speed through WhatsApp. I register. I proceed. A number of young people are registered. Jeez. What, what was the... What, what led to them being lazy? Your experience at that time? It, it's, not, it's not at the top of their priorities. But what is... They are not even informed. What? What? what why am I voting? Uh, what, how will it help me? Why is it important for me to go and vote? They don't know that. From my experience, how young people know if they go to vote, it's because of you have drilled enough propaganda in their head mm. so that they can go to the voting polls and vote. But if you you can take any young person, if you can go outside and in the street and pick young person, any young person who can vote, and ask that person, why who vote? Mm. The government is what, 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 or I love the government. They, it's always like that. I buy a better, or I love them. They're doing well. Mm, they won't mm. go into depth and and articulate the the, the, the issues the, confronting the, issues the country. Outside of the issues, we all know the issues. Yeah. We talk about them on a daily. True. But they won't even take you through the manifestos okay. of each political party. They, will, they won't tell you, which, okay, I will vote this part because their manifesto is more realistic mm. towards making sure that poverty comes to an end, to in making sure all the inequalities of this country when it comes to incomes are balanced. Yeah. The other one is not realistic. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't relate to the policies of this country. 
they won't put you take you into confidence around around those logistics and dynamics all they will tell you kuthi loya uphathe udle imali loya na ayimala ga yithi kakhulu so so mbuyisela maru o loya loya no u grand u grand we excited there's something about them that's that's more glitter yeah, so you need to be a charismatic leader mm. not a leader well, but that's a character of a politician at its core <laughs> Is Those it? are the kind of politicians we've created as a country. Yeah. If you, you go back into books, you'll realize or Bob and Tate, Nelson Mandela, they, they were not much of those. They were people who were able to sit in a hall mm -hmm. and reason with people and educate them while trying to convince them on a particular idea. Let's go back to that the build up to your yes. to your vote. Yes. Continue telling us that 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 moment. So young people, I register them in numbers. It's fine. I'm not sure they're much they because they were. It was a group of friends, so they are different groups. I I speak to anyone, everyone, because Mbalanga ni se okay, we register to vote on the actual voting day. That's where the problem started. <laughs> hey, what, what is the problem? Queues are too long. Ah, young people will not stand that. Really? Nope. Trust me, it was the second time experiencing that. But I'm not 2019, going to stand. Yeah. 2021. Same thing. Oh yeah, same. 2021, the local government elections. Yes. Yeah. 2021, 2019, 2021. Uh -huh. The same story. I lose key. And don't ask why. So we are late. Exactly. You know. H. That's how you lose them. Now late, you are you are starting to be annoying now. Every two minutes you are, you are knocking in that door. My feet. Let's go and vote. Mm. Over the past few weeks, you have been sitting with these guys for two hours per day. Trying to stress this thing and explaining it to them how much important it is. Yeah. Like no, as you always talk, obviously they're busy rolling their things. It's nice. We are laughing. We are laughing. It is. Hey, come on, pay. Hey, Angel. Can you 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 can So it's important for us to go and vote, blah blah. Even if you want to vote for someone else, not what I vote for, but let's go and vote as long as we have exercised your voting right. Mm. Ah, they agree. Voting date like ah, let's get so we are late. Later on, you don't find this one. You find these ones. Yes. You take them there. They chew. So pumira ngano sa kwa kwa omunya kasekela no teo ya bo ya. So out of all those young people, I read that a high number of them didn't go and actually vote. vote. Yeah. That is what we are going to be confronted with next year. What is your observation, numbers-wise, percentage-wise, uh, in relation to what? Exactly? To 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 the to those that you registered versus those that didn't vote. Okay, out in, of a hundred you've registered, how many voted? I think it can be forty-five percent. That's terrible. It's terrible. And with that forty-five percent, you have to beg and say, "Don't ask why." You, you have to, to literally hold their hands hold hand because they can't tolerate those long shoes. The only shoe they can tolerate is at the fifty a post office. Yeah. But for voting, because they don't understand the long term effects of them voting, hence yeah. they won't tolerate it. But because of it, the fifty they know the short term effect is having money. They can tolerate it. That's true. That's how we are. That's that's the society. That's the society we have built as a country. Mm -hmm. But. You know, I, I I sit and wonder because the challenge is coming now, and you said it. How do we overcome it this time? Let's let's take it back to the IC. Uh. We saw them, uh, the CEO of of of, of the IC giving a report that them are saying that our we are almost reaching our target of attracting young people to come and register to vote. Mm. Mm. It's not a new thing if we follow a uh, a uh, poly or uh, elections. Mm. In 2021, a high number of young people went to register to vote. How many did pitch to the voting polls to vote? True. The same thing is happening now. The, and the appetite now it's even worse. The, let's not be excited over that. The appetite for of, to, 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 to to register to vote. Yes. Basically, it's the appetite to vote. Mm. But on the actual voting day, will young people go and vote now? Do you honestly think there's a high interest to vote now? As I had said, young people of people of this country are activists of trend. So a good trend, yeah. It's it's a trendy conversation. Okay. Hence, young people are going in their numbers to vote, and now it has become even easier because you you can register at home, mm, but mm, online. If, online. Yeah. But voting requires you to queue there. Mm, you can't vote at home. You can't vote at home. Mm. And most political parties, it's only one party that has mastered the art of registering you to vote and making sure that you only and and you. And, and making sure that you go and vote when it's time to vote on that day. Which one is that? It's the DA. It has mastered that. Uh -huh. You go to the Western Cape, check numbers there. 
a slight increase in voter registration will reside to, the, to, to, a, to a slight increase in the seats and numbers that you'll get. So you They're, see the correlation. They, they correlate. Yeah. If um, Abantaba voted like this year compared to last elections are 10 people, mm. you would tell us eight of those people voted for the DA. Mm. Go to the, the Western Cape from 2004 till to date. Uh, until 2014, yeah. they, there is a, it, it balance, it correlates. How do you think they're doing it? I, they are able to stress the important, they are able to stress it enough to the people. Mm. I don't know, but I think they you are- You don't know I, physically. Physically, it how is. they do it, but a propaganda mission is very simple. I assume, I'm not yeah. very sure, I don't want to be best for mm -hmm. simple things. It's very simple. It's very important to vote here because we don't want a black person to govern the Western Cape. Mm -hmm. It's, it's enough. It's enough to deter- For the DA to, to say that yeah, to, to encourage uh, those that have to vote to it's vote. It's very simple for the DA to say that. Yeah. And for a voter to say, and it's true, I can't afford. Mm. So I think that's how they, they win it. But I don't know, maybe they have other mechanisms. But in the Western Cape, they have been able to master that very well. Mm. To convert voter registration Station into voters. voters. Yeah. Into votes. Into votes. Yeah. That's how much they have mastered that. With us, Shema, no, it's bad. You say trends. Yes. I think this young people operate in that state of mind. Yes. Can't you harness that as a, as a communication tool, as a motivating tool, and maintain the ability to create the trendiness yes. uh, of, of voting? Uh, elections in the US uh, during the Obama era, yes. it became trendy. Uh, even I remember there was a moment when different musicians were wearing uh, T-shirts. I remember P. Diddy in particular had ran a campaign that was trying to get young people to vote where they, they were branded with, with, with voting messaging. Can't you then harness that same state of mind that you find existing and harness it all the way to elections? Okay. It, it, it's a good approach. And maybe it, it, it has worked in the US. Mm. Even in South Africa, it can work. Even the IEC tries to do that once in a while, whereby it gets influential people to be the one getting the message across of voting. Mm. But it goes back to the real question. You can't say to me, go and vote. Vote for what? Mm. You need to educate me first on why is it important for me to vote, which is what the IEC has been failing to do over the years. They, 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 they are awareness or mechanism to make people aware that they need to register to vote or to go and vote has been the same strategy over the years and it's not working. Mm. That's the reality that they are shying away from. You can get an influential person who is now, who is trending now. Well, they're using, uh, they're using uh, one of the Banyana Banyana players now, I noticed, on their communication to try to get people to register. Okay. So, but they are using trendy people. Okay. Let's say you're using Kespa. Yeah. Is Kespa politically inclined enough to say go register to vote because of one, two, three, and five, and six. Nah, mm. is he? Okay, okay. I, I don't know. And I, I'm not. I so don't think it's, it's important. A... It's important for you to get a person who is who is inclined in life, like Moses Wendell. Mm. Those are people who whom you can hold a, a mall, maybe a, a fan can ambambe mall. Why are you your vote? That person can be able to, this is where can be able to explain to that person where this is because of one, two, three, and five, and six. You can't just take anyone who is a public figure and use as the face to push this campaign. You need to take someone who will be able to account even on their own in their own spaces to say it's important because it will help you to achieve one, two, three, five, and six. Mm. However, I wonder if you acknowledge the mandate of the IEC and the political dynamics of our country. Yes. Uh, 1994 elections, it's about teaching people how to make an X. Yes. So we don't have spoiled ballots. I mean, it's basic voter education. Yes. Basic, basic, basic. They, the interest is there. Great interest to vote because it's the first elections. It's the freedom elections, the elections we've waited for for hundreds of years. Now we finally have them. The evolution of our thinking and the realities yes. is different. Vote education has no longer, doesn't require you to teach people how to cross an X and so forth and so yes. forth. That means we have moved past Damn. certain stages. But where are we now? We are now facing challenges that, People describe every day, well, you name it, from load shedding to garbage being collected to crime and so forth. And now the IEC may, and correct me based on your observation, find itself conflicted when it has to communicate why you have to vote. So put yourself in the shoes of the IEC for one second okay. and tell me what you would say 
if you were to complete that sentence, the sentence that say, go to vote, and this is why. From my end, it's, it's, it's not about go to vote, and this is why. It's about saying, we, we, we have a responsibility of voting. Because? Because voting is important. Then you table the issue that you have been raising a number of issues in this country. Mm. Therefore, us as the IEC, we're not going to tell you why you should go and vote, but we are going to make sure that we assist you in, make, in taking the right decision when it comes to choosing which party to vote for. Therefore, okay. the IEC mm. has a role of teaching young people how to identify and distinguish between leaders who are taking chances with them and leaders who are, who, who are being opportunists with them. However, yes. let's go back. Our challenge is simple. Our challenge is getting them to vote. Yes. Is getting them interested to vote. And after you got them interested, getting them to see the value of the long queue. You remember those yes. problems? The problems are basic. Yes. They are not, they are not uh, uh, ideological. <laughs> they are not fundamental. Yes. They are merely instead of waiting, waiting in a long queue here. That's where the problems are. The problems are basic. How does then the IEC say to you, uh, Lunge, I see Antoine, it's important. How, how, how do they emphasize the importance? There, there is where you, me and you, we don't agree. I'm yeah. not arguing. I'm no, asking. I'm saying where I don't <laughs> agree with the statement where you say the problems are basic. Okay. okay. And you said they're not ideological. Mm. From my point of view, that the problem is ideological. Okay. If you understood the importance of, of, of voting ideological, you would see the necessity of queuing in that long queue for, for, for 30 minutes in order for you to get your ex. Mm -hmm. So the role of the IC once again is not to say it's because, but it's to teach the importance or the, uh, to, to, to drill ideologically the importance and the value of voting the long-term effects of voting mm. and the short-term falls of not going to vote, mm. even the long-term effect of not going to vote. So it, 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 it's all ideological. Mm. And you said something about finding itself being conflicted. No, there's nothing of, of being conflicted here. You, you need to play a, a, a role of, being a, of, of not being biased and being neutral. Of course. Explaining the factors. You are confronted with, with load shading. Okay, there's load shading. And the, 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 the administration you are saying is not working for you. Mm. And this is, this, these are the criteria you must take in checking whether the administration is working for you or not. These are the criteria you need to take in order to check what they promised you last election when you voted for them. Have they yet delivered now? Nah. Are you saying yes. that that should be the role of the IEC? Yes. To articulate a message similar to that? Yes, to teach democracy. One of their strategic priorities is to educate on democracy and civil mm -hmm. uh, programs. They need, to, they need to make young people understand what is democracy. Because when you say democracy to me, to me, democracy is equal to freedom. Mm. I associate democracy with freedom. I don't understand the, 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 the voting part and the involvement and the bureaucrats involve all the, the, the government's fears which are there around democracy, mm. which, is, which is the role of the IEC. When you go to their, their policies, those are the, the, their, that's, their, that's their function and their role. Do you realize that once IEC messaging starts highlighting the challenges it's easy for for others to see it as party politicking you you, you are quite correct mm, that's why i said yes, i spoke yes. of i used the word conflict okay yes but if the ic doesn't play that role who is supposed to play it because you can't uh, give that role to political parties because the messaging they, that they will they, they will communicate will be mixed with propaganda mm. In that regard, if the IC is not supposed to play that role, there is supposed to be a structure or a commission that, or, or a, 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 an institution that is established to push voter education. Mm. In, in, if it's not the IEC's role. If, if it's not, as we are saying. Because in, in, in universities, institutes of higher learning, colleges and universities, in the build-up towards SRC elections every year, they have a day whereby they do what we call voters' education. Mm. They educate voters on how to take the right decision, on how to take whether this leader is credible enough to lead us or not. They are not saying uh, things which are conflicting, but they are merely educating. As mm. we had said that in 1994, the things the IEC was teaching is to put an X so that we don't have spoiled pilot. Mm. It's amongst because, many things. Amongst yeah. many things. Because there was no need for them to educate on the importance of going there to vote because the interest was, was there. The interest was there. Mm. The build up, has, the conversation has been there, and the education was enough over over the years during apartheid. Mm. So times, as we had said, they evolve. We no longer know 
what's the value around voting as Ama 2000. Mm. You need to take me through that process and explain it to me. That's what the IAC is supposed to do. Even if they can use these people whom you, you say they are, they are trained and influential, but they need to make sure that they choose people who will be credible enough to articulate these issues. Mm. So that, that, that's my position. If it's not the position of the IEC, they must find someone to push that thing. If you had to score the IEC on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of performance, 10 being amazing, 1 being a total failure, what is your, what is your, your score? I would say 4. 4 is it fail? It's fail. Actually, it's 3. Yeah. Not, not even 4. Because over the years, we, have, we are seeing every year there are new political parties. Mm -hmm. And in all these political parties, you can tell these leaders, no, man. They are not pro. No, they are not pro. To they are not pro serving the people. They are not there to serve our people. But it's not the role of the IEC. The IEC administers the process. Administers the process. Ensures that the process is run fairly, yes. smoothly, with no manga manga. That's the role of the IEC. The IEC. role of the IEC continues to be to encourage people to vote, amongst many things, to register voters. Uh, and during the actual elections, to make sure that everything runs according to the way it's supposed to. So, and you're scoring them at a four. Uh, Yet we've had relatively fair, peaceful, uh, well-administered elections. Okay. As you're saying, uh, their role is to administrate. Mm. administrate. As I've highlighted, that uh, the, the, the strategic priorities of the IC also mm. is to ensure that it informs and engages citizens and 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 citizens and stakeholders mm -hmm. on, on voter education. And you feel they, they have, get a zero they, for on that. On that one, they get a zero. So far, they haven't done they, to raise awareness on why it's important to vote. Mm. You can't say your democracy owned it to 2004. Mm. 2004, does he even know what is democracy? Because it, as part of the curriculum at school, they don't even dwell much on it. They just touch on it uh, when they are dealing with the conversation of apartheid. Mm. But is democracy being taught at school? Do they, does a 2000, 2004 know what, what is democracy and how democracy is supposed to work? Maybe someone benefits from the confusion. Maybe someone benefits from the lack of knowledge. Thank you. A lot of people are benefiting. All those parties who are in opposition pensions are benefiting because year in, year out, their numbers are increasing mm. because of their capitalizing on this lack of knowledge by but, up and coming voters. But those that are in, 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 in the ruling yes. side of the divide yes. should then take take their position seriously as well, isn't it? To educate? Educate now, okay, let's say the, a, a government starts mm. to educate, uh, the, the, the uh, ANC led government starts to educate. Won't the education be be, be filtered with propaganda? As I as I had alluded on. I don't know. It will, because they will push what you want them to to, to what they want you to 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 hear. Mm which is what we are seeing in mainstream media, in all these news channels. They push what they, they see fit for them. But it's, a, it's freedom of, of speech. They can say whatever they want. No one will stop them. You can start a, a narrative now that says you're a white man called <laughs> Lungelo. No one can stop you. Uh, that's your narrative. <laughs> that's why we are here. This yes. freedom of speech has costed us, costed us a lot. So what are you saying about freedom of speech now? Because people use propaganda machinery and say it's freedom of speech. But that's what it is. The government must intervene. And cab freedom of speech. No, not, not cab, mm. but to make sure that it communicates effective and incredible information, yeah. which will, will not be biased. Okay, let's, let's go back to, uh, to who you're voting for. You voted in your first election. Yes, yes. Who did you vote for? I voted for the Multi-African African National Congress. Why was that at the time? As I admitted that me joining politics was through Kosas and... Me, my chain in Kosas may got me familiar with the politics of the ANC because one of the objective aims and objectives of the organization is to rally behind the pen of the ANC mm. and all other MDM structures. Mm. And outside of that, you get up exposed to the to tools of analyzing politics in general. You can be able to read other policy documents from other parties. I got an opportunity to weigh all these political parties and see which one works best for me. And out of all these parties, I was like, the ANC, which I was introduced to, I think it's the best, actually is the organization that I can relate with and I can agree with their policy positions and their manifestos. And looking so uh, thus far how, 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 how much they've worked in building a country. I have few complaints, but they've made sure that this country is still up and 
up and running. There's a difference between rallying behind the ethos and the manifesto and policy documents. Very different yes. to, to the application. I get you out know that. Yes. What what you say and what you do yes. are two different things. things. Didn't didn't you you say over and above policy documents and rallying behind a flag? Yes. Uh, maybe I need to dig more. Yes. Didn't that become part of of your research? Yes, or part of research findings. It was part of my research, as I have said, Hori. In their manifesto, they 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 make promises and how they're going to implement them. Mm. And when I, I compare it with uh, policies which are, are, are in government, mm. and uh, when I check the work that they've done over the year, the years in assisting to eradicate poverty, inclusivity, and all those things, we can see with social grant, social welfare, and all those things, they have done fairly well in addressing the, the 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 previous imbalances of this country through the RTP programs. Currently, they have the NTP programs. The implementing implementation process, it's it's fairly working. Mm. It's working very well as much as it has its own problems and its outfalls like any other system, but the ANC is still working. You and I have highlighted a, a number of challenges. Yes, yes. Education system, the, education, the very education that's taught in school, and so forth. Uh, the ANC has been in government throughout your lifetime. Yes, yes. Uh, and you say things are working well, according to you. Des yes. Describe in detail, pick one example that you think is working well. To, that justifies your vote going to the ANC. Okay. The ANC has created an environment for people of South Africa to, to fail numerous times and pick themselves up, pick themselves up and try again. Okay. okay. Carry on. I'm trying to question who are these people. Okay. Yeah. There, and if they're standing now. <laughs> there, there are a lot of stories. Uh, the likes of Bo 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 Skinny Sbu, there is an owner of an avatar advertising agency. Mm. Those are guys who will tell you, I got an opportunity. I got millions. I blew them. Mm. And I managed to pick myself up and build again. Mm. And today I'm standing again and moving forward. It, it tells you that we live in a country whereby failure is it's something which you can do and 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 come out of it alive. Mm. It's because of the policies which are in place, because of the opportunities which the ANC government has created for a number of people. But those policies are not created for for the few. They're created for everyone. Yes. Yeah, they're not exclusive. But you're talking about very few people in yeah. that in your example. Yes, yes, yes. So how do you then say the same out of a hundred people, two people who make it, yes. it's a bad story. It has to be everyone that makes it. Makes it. Yeah. It, it goes back to my argument of saying com effective communication in this country is the problem that, that stops us from moving forward and achieving a whole lot of things. Mm. If, if you follow uh, the, the, the treasurer's office, you, you'll realize that a lot of money goes back into treasury because people are not going there to get the money or the money is not distributed effective enough. By who? By the government. Which government? The ANC-led government. You see where, where the story w ends up? Where it, where, where it ends up. Because the ANC is, that is at the center of everything. Mm. But the ANC cannot play a role of spoon feeding people all the time. Mm. It's very unfair for the, to the ANC to say that you, might, that you must spoon feed us all the time. Mm. Where, where is independence? Where is self-reliance? Mm. Because young people, uh, people in general, constantly complain about the ANC, about what the ANC is not doing and forget the things that the ANC is doing. Help us uh, understand uh, because a lot of people are going to watch this episode. Yes, yes. I can tell you for sure. I don't doubt it. Yes. Help us understand why, and this is an innocent question, why should a young person of your age, 22 year old, vote for the ANC in the next elections. And I will ask this question also about other parties, for that matter. Okay. And why they shouldn't vote for other parties. Help us understand why in the 2024 elections, you are going to vote for the ANC. For the ANC. Yeah. We know that the Mashabela, we live in a country that is deemed to be a fatherless nation, whereby a whole lot of people, or a whole lot of households are full of single parents. The ANC has assisted a, a whole lot of mothers in raising children on their own. Mm. The ANC has assisted a whole lot of people in taking their kids to school. Mm. As much as you can say it's the role of the ANC to do that, but 
the ANC has made sure that that thing happens faster and quicker. A, some households don't go on an empty stomach. A, a number of house, households, only a few households can go on an empty stomach on a daily. Because at the end of the month, the ANC, the, you know that you have a social grant welfare that you can go and withdraw. It's because of the ANC government that has saw the need that we need to give these people money so that they can be able to survive while they're still looking for a job. If they can't f- support their own children, Nancy Mali grant. Old people who have retired or who are not fortunate enough to find work until their 60s, the, the ANC has been able to intervene and say we are assisting. Currently, through, through the ANC government, it has been able to make sure that uh, almost free education in institutions of higher learning, it's there. As much as it, it is their role to do that, but they have implemented it. Mm. You get the sense. Well, well let's, 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 let's pick on one. Yes. There's a few points there. Uh, the grant system. Yes. Uh, you let's let's go to free education for a second. Um, is it an ANC policy of free education? It, it is an. It it was adopted. The ANC policy. Yeah. The, the, there is a policy in the ANC that says we need to have free education for all. Okay. It's use. in it's in the freedom chart. Yes. Just to clarify. Yes. Uh, but kids have to had to fight for it. You are quite correct. They yeah. had to fight for they, it. And, and they had to fight for it during an ANC-run government. Yes. 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 It, and you can't then say it's the ANC that, that made it possible. <laughs> you must remember, the fight was centered around implementing it. The ANC can, Who should implement it? The ANC can decide and say, no, we're not implementing anything. Yeah. Yes, they can sit down and say, we're not implementing it. We don't want to implement it. Okay, no, wait. Let's not complicate this conversation. Yes. It's actually quite simple. Yes. Uh, are you giving credit? to the ANC for free education in South Africa currently? Yes, I'm giving it to the ANC because it, it, it could have easily said no. <laughs> That's my view. No, of course, they could have said no. <laughs> but It's they, not possible. We don't have money. Yeah, it's 100%. But they are not the ones that activated the movement that you're so familiar with. AF is my fault. All movement. of us are all... You love that movement. Love that you realize that that movement would not have existed if education was free, automatically. Okay, thank you. It wouldn't have existed. Yeah. And you are saying the activators of that, or, 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 or the, the reason behind this free education, almost free education that we are having in this country is because of that movement. Do you know that the free education was announced years after the movement had stopped? I like that because... And the movement didn't start in 2016. It dates back from 2007, TUT, people from TUT, this thing started in 2007. But it gained momentum in 2016 when it was more, it was influenced by external factors. Because if you look into the depth of the, of the fees must fall, there's a documentary around that. They will tell you the reason this thing gained momentum in 2016. It's because now it was used as, as a political strategy to destabilize the, 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 the administration of President Mshulos. Okay, that's fine. I don't, I don't want to go there. Uh, because that's a debate on its own. On its own. Yeah, yes. that you and I do not have proof. <laughs> Anyone can throw any p- propaganda to justify an action. Yeah. Even, even apartheid, they justify it on religious yeah. grounds. Yeah. So we can't go there. Let's stay here. Let's stay focused. Um, in 2007, yes. where you say it started, yeah. or at least that's, it, was even, it existed even then, which government was in power? It was the government of the ANC. Okay, fine. In in in, uh, in recent time, during the times of Abom Kebo and all of those, yes. during the, the current movement, irrespective of the reason why it happened, yes. it yielded results it, yes. of what we're seeing now. But not immediately. It's fine. Just later. It doesn't matter. Which government? Okay. It was the ANC government. It, all I'm trying to understand from your logic is, because you give credit to the ANC yes. for fees must fall. And I'm saying, are you completely ignoring all those fees must fall activi- activists in, not, in your narrative? I'm not completely ignoring them. Yeah. You must remember that the ANC, I, when we are in, I refer, people who are in power, I refer them in, into a position of responsibility, not position of power. But the ANC is in power. It can easily ignore that thing and say no. The noise. Yeah, it can easily ignore, as it did in 2016. Mm. Because it, it, it only announced free education in 2017, December. After we'd almost forgotten that they, there was even a movement of fees must fall. So this tells you if it was a different government, it would have, it would have decided not to, to not to even implement the you, issue of free education. Do you know that if it, also there's a possibility in your last statement, if it was a different government, yes. do you know that you can also say in that statement, yes. if it was a different government, 
a free education would have been implemented automatic, automatically, without any struggle at all. Thank It you. would have been from 1994, education should be free for all. For all. Thank you. Now the education is free for all. We 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 have this tendency that Emma Shabela of 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 arguing things from a citizen's point of view only, forgetting that there are government uh, bureaucracies and procedures. Absolutely. So you need to justify it in a government term. Or we can't just announce that, even if they had announced it in 1994. Mm. How was it going to be uh, outrolled? Because in 2018, if you remember very well, it was difficult. It was hard. They had to think long and hard mm. in making sure where they enroll this thing called free education. Mm. So. As leaders, you need to remember that in governance is not easy. You don't you don't just wake up and say we are implementing that police. Mm. It takes a lot of thinking into it. All the the, the credit we must give to the FM, FMF FISMA's fourth generation is that they reminded the government of the ANC that I fail to remember remember that you promised us free education for all. Mm. The time is now. We have delayed us for far too long. Please implement. Great. Your police. Great. I want to speed out of this one uh, quickly. But say to you that if you're a leader with hundred rand and the children haven't eaten, do you need to be reminded to feed them? Do they need to remind you violently? N not really. I get your responsibility. And, and, and the, the the example we are using, I I feel like it's it doesn't relate too much. With the the conversation we we, we are confronted no, with, no, because no, no. with the FMF issue, mm. the the free education process, it was it it, it was beyond money. Okay, it, it it involved a whole lot of administration in it, of which the ANC was able to master at the end of the day. Even though the even today we still have we are still having struggles around the the, the free education process, mm. but it's not easy to implement government policy positions because if they had implemented the free education policy prematurely we would be finding ourselves in a situation whereby we are, we are in a country that is bankrupt are you saying that the government was working on free education yes they have <laughs> been Before, working let me let me tell you why these questions matter and 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 you and i have spoken before and i said i i don't argue yes. i ask uh, i i'm trying to find a position in your politics yes Where you will not defend things that can be defended, yes, um, because that is that can be a problem on its own in society, where nishisili inlu, and now you're justifying that there was a witch, and you know there wasn't. Yes, there were other reasons why you were burning the house. Do you see what I mean? Yes, and you now look for reasons that will help the argument, but not help society. Yes, you see that's where it can be a challenge in. In how some of these, I remember you said you want to be a communicator, yes. a communicator that that communicates a message that helps society again, yes. not that damages society while you're trying to push a narrative, which is what we end up finding everywhere in the world. It's not only a South African problem. So I'm saying to you, uh, be aware of that reality that you may face. Yes. And and this, by the way, this very education I was given by you yes. when you said to me once. And you, we can go back there. When you said to me once that you you realize once you are in politics that it's actually quite complicated. Thank you. It's not that easy. Take me to that time. You are now an SRC president, but you're you're finding that you want to change school uniform. You yes. dumb example. Yes. Red blazer to blue blazer. Yes. It's a pertinent issue at the time. And the, the children are saying this red blazer is giving them nightmares, and you want to change it. You find other details that you have to deal with inside the political machinery. What were those challenges for you? Uh, thank you for that one, because it it it, it, it helps us. It, it helps us on this free education, absolutely uh, enrollment and process. You must remember that outside when we are when we are outside leadership, you can be able to pinpoint and blame everyone. But the moment you get into a position of power and responsibility, you get to realize or it's axuma zenze. You don't do as you wish. Mm -hmm. There are policies in place. There are there are things that you must consider, and there is a system that all that is already in existence. As much as the ideas are brilliant and are going to uplift the community the community that you are leading, but there are process process that you must follow, mm -hmm. and there are people who will get affected if you change a thing or two. In most cases, it would be financially, 
or the, the, the way of doing things in general. So those are the challenges you get confronted with as a leader who, who is governing. Mm -hmm. Hence, governing is not easy. You, we, we saw now uh, there is a party that said the moment we take over government, we are going to implement insourcing. Mm -hmm. They are governing Johannesburg and Egrulin. They, uh, they have key MMC positions there. How far are they with implementing the insourcing uh, program? Mm -hmm. They have not done it. It's because there is a lot that goes into governance more, more than what you think it is from the outside point of view. Mm -hmm. Hence, we need to familiarize our people with those dynamics and, and things so that when a popularist stands in a podium and tries to use fancy statement to capture you, we are saying that thing is not realistic mm -hmm. according to policies that we, are, we, are, we have in South Africa when it comes to governing. Mm -hmm. So those are the challenges people of this country are not aware of. Okay. In your, in your case, what were you confronted with? In my case, people who are in authority, you must remember uh, you are a student representative council. There are people who need to approve on your behalf. Mm -hmm. We are not entirely the, the absolute God of the system. We are, just, we are merely a communicator on behalf of the students, mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are just here to submit issues. We are not really, really in power because mm -hmm. you can't change things around as you wish, but yours is to make submissions. Same goes with government. Mm -hmm. They make, make submissions in parliament. If parliament doesn't agree with it, they take it out. Mm. Same thing with us. A lot of process, a lot of programs were to be implemented. But because of the person who, who needs to approve that particular program says, no, I won't approve it. Mm. Or play, they play delay tactics. That, that, that's what they are good at. Delay tactics until you forget or until your, 12, your term ends. Mm. So those are the challenges we, we, student leaders are confronted with. And you're saying you can apply the same theory to government. And government is not a matter of delay tactics, but the, the back and forth of, on, on ideological thinkings. Because you must remember, parties subscribe to different ideological thinkings. Others, it's communist. Within the very same uh, political party. No, I'm saying in, in parliament. You must remember, mm. the, as much as the ANC on its own is having majority in parliament. It that would have been my next question, is, but carry on. As much as the ANC has, has majority in parliament, it doesn't just wake up one morning and say, we, are, we have a bill, we are implementing it or we are signing it into law. Why not? There are processes in parliament in, 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 taking a, in, in putting a bill, in, in, into making it, in making a bill into law. Yes. From, uh, from portfolio committee to the parliament assembly to the NC, NCOP to discuss and all those logistics. And then what, where, where does it end up? It ends up back in parliament. And then? But what, how, how, how the, the parliament of South Africa is structured how democracy is structured. Mm. It allows engagements before saying majority rules. Granted, it, it allows engagements. I don't so, want you to spend labor on the engagement. It, so it ends up somewhere. It ends up but somewhere. But it came okay. is a pale and dot. Well, like, yeah. It came is a pale is a, is a, is a blow with the game pale. So when that, that moment comes, what happens? Okay. Let's just use an example, yes. a palapa. No, there was a vote in parliament. Yes. That's where we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who, who and then it was voted that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't go further than where it was. It shouldn't yeah. be investigated any further. Yes. That's a decision. It's the decision of the majority. Of the majority, but there was an engagement before it arrived. Absolutely, there. absolutely. I don't deny that. And outside of of the palapala pala things, uh, there are a whole whole of whole lot of other issues like the NHI uh, uh, National Health Insurance What What Act. You see. I'm merely saying to you, because you're complicating this discussion for yourself. Yes. Uh, that it came finally paid. Made it paid. Whether in your extra time, it came finally paid. Finally, say, can I so lal? Yes. Okay. We've done that. We've discussed. We are done. We've debated. Abo Flochvambu stood there and yes. argued. Abo Banban, they stood there and argued. And then the deal. The deal. But you're right. What do we do? We vote. And the majority wins. wins. The point I'm trying to, to ask you is that you seem to, to, saying, to be saying or avoiding the point that ultimately a majority will win any debate in parliament. Yes. That's just the reality. doesn't matter how strong or good the debate of the, majority, of the minority is, that the majority will ultimately say, it's nonsense, but we are going to vote for it. I'm asking you, why is it that you seem to be removing the responsibility of implementing okay. 
certain policies from the ANC and you want to stay in the debate. Okay. The Mashabel, it's, it's passed now. The president signs it into law. It's something that must be implemented. implemented. Yes. They, it's been voted for. It's been voted the for. The majority said it's we fine. are giving free education. Yes, it's fine. Yeah. Now they say, where, is the, where, where will, will we get the money for that? Granted. Okay. Keep going. Now it must be taken to a certain committee. Mm -hmm. Years go by. Yes. Years go by. Mm. Uh, okay, the, 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 the money is now there. Mm. Let's implement. The conversation starts again. Yeah. How are we going to implement this free education? How best will it work? It's another process. Because mm. these people are not every day in parliament. They are not every day in office to, to focus on this one issue, which is free education. Why don't they regard it as a priority? To yeah, a point as, where we will work all night until it's done. Do you know what they do during <laughs> uh, uh, elections of, of, a, of an ANC president? They don't sleep. Have you seen them? Yes, as I've noticed. Yes, yeah, so that means they can't do this. Okay. Yes. They can't do it. But... We are saying if we're focusing on this issue, these are the issues which are already in existence, which are currently undergoing. We must forget about them. They are no longer important. Mm. You see, now you, you, you are neglecting others because of this one issue that just, just came up okay. and that now is popular before the people of South Africa. Mm. You see, now you are becoming a leader who, who is driven by trends also, mm. Mm. which is one thing we must try to shy away from. So one thing about the government and the policies of governing and governing on its own, is that the procedures will, will set you up for failure mm. and the process is involved in, in, in finally implementing something because there are constant engagements, there are constant strategic plannings that must be made in order for that thing to be enrolled effectively and efficiently mm. Mm. because one, one mistake, you enroll it wrong, the money will be lost. Taxpayers will expect the NC to come and account. Then there will be rumors of saying the NC stole money again. So some of the, with these things, you need to be careful mm -hmm. on how you implement them. The NHI policy, which is now, which now was passed into law, it's still not yet implemented, but it's a national priority. Mm -hmm. It's because of, we need to plan properly mm -hmm. so that the execution is very, it's effective and it yields the results we desire. Do you disagree with anything the ANC does? I disagree with a whole lot of things. Example? With how, how slow they're implementing things. Okay. Which is part of the discussion now. Do you do you think they can implement faster? They can implement faster if they hold each other accountable. So there's a problem of accountability yes. within the ANC. Let's let, let's say the, within the ANC led government. Because when you say the ANC, okay, you, okay. you, you put fine. it to the political That's part. okay. Within the ANC led government, mm. there's a problem of accountability mm. and of and of moving faster than in, in implementing in, in implementing things. things. Yeah. The Department of uh, Evaluation of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, that's its role to make sure that these all these departments are, are doing are implementing all these programs that ministers and the president signed and agreed upon. Is that department uh who, who leads that department? It's it's Khramukho uh, Ms. Khramukho mm -hmm. is the one currently in that department. Clearly not doing a great job. And at all, and I think even over the years, all the other ministers before her, yes, they have not done justice to to that department because the ANC finds it's in this pro it finds itself in this problem of saying it's not delivering for the people of South Africa is because that department has not been a good watchdog on behalf of the president. Is that department that's doing well? Oh, a tricky one. In the ANC-led government. In the ANC-led government. Yeah. Acknowledging that they don't run province, all provinces and so forth, all municipalities, but in national. Not really. I can, I, there's no department that I'll say I'll give it a star. But you still say ANC has done well. I'm arguing from a point of having to govern before and understanding how governance works. If I, I, I had never been exposed to governance and all these things of, of, of bureaucracies and procedures, I would be saying the ANC has failed. The pa ANC pa is, pause that thought, is, because it's an important thought. 99.9% is. of South Africans have never governed. Is. And they won't in their whole lifetime. Is. So that means that that knowledge is exclusive. It really is. You realize that. And, and that knowledge is not empowering to, or that lack of knowledge, yes. as, a re, as real as it will continue to be in people's lives, uh, will always pay, play, put them in the exact same position of, of saying the ANC government has, done, has not done well, based on your, your, your knowledge, that if you hadn't been exposed, you would see the world differently. Now that you know, Guti, 
Magukniki hundred trangu tenga labantu onto anugul. And you didn't. I must also acknowledge that this thing is not easy to do. Yes. Not everyone undersees the world that way. And that's 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 what we need to push. You can't. Because you, you, what you've been exposed to in your life yes. is, is, an, is a rare opportunity. You even said it. It's a rare opportunity that not everyone will ever be exposed to. How, they, how, how buying food for children who did not eat requires submitting a memo, requires submitting a proposal, requires that proposal to be debated. You understand that? Can we simplify the process acknowledging the challenges that the country is facing, in your opinion? We can by making sure we, departments constantly give a, a feedback reports to the public, explaining where we came here and asked your, your problems and you gave us the problem. This is how far we have gone as the NC government. Mm. And we have failed here because of one, two, three, five, and six not allowing. And when a, a processes, process, bureaucrats. bureaucrats is not allowing or we have failed it because the desired outcome were not positive in the manner we had expected. Because the, the ANC government has a tendency of going to consult the people to get their problems and not, not giving feedback. Hence, you find people saying the ANC is not working mm. because they don't give feedback and allow people to engage the feedback or the results the ANC has produced. Let's use an example. Yes. The ANC comes to your, to your hood. Yes. And they stand in front of you. And they say, tell us your problems. You tell them one, pick one, pick anyone that your society is exposed to currently. The issue of drug abuse. Okay. And you raise your hand and you express how bad things are in the township and with regards to drugs. And the NC said, we had you. NC led government. Yes. Let's clarify. They said, we had you. We're coming back. As a, as, a, as a citizen, what are you expecting? I'm expecting to the following week to see the ANC led government resolving those problems on the streets. Mm. And after me seeing uh, Amapanya Panya uh, raiding those houses, doing everything and more. And after a month, I see no difference or no results or no progress in resolving the issue of, 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 of drug abuse. Mm. I expect the ANC government to come back. Is that what you've been experiencing? Not at all. The ANC government doesn't go back to the people and say, this is how far we have gone. No, but that's not what you said you, ex you expect. You're expecting to see movement on the ground. On the ground. Not, not another oh. conversation. Oh, okay. Again, because yes. there's a difference between a, a babu, go next drugs issue here. Help us. Abantuana they are they are using drugs. Drugs is rampant. It's everywhere. That's, the, that's what a, a, a parent is saying in that meeting. And you're saying you're expecting people to start seeing Amapanya Panya working. Moving is. Not another conversation. Because another conversation is an explanation of why it didn't happen. Amen. You see, there's a difference. It, 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 that's why I keep using the dumb example of kids that are supposed to eat. You know, let me tell you why that example matters. While you're discussing hunger, it's not getting better. I can't worse. wait for you to finish discussing that I haven't eaten. You understand that? Uh, and you're likely to, to, to discuss in a in a in a in a room where there's Google. It gets worse. We are discussing hunger in an air-conditioned room. I'm a croissant. They are waiting for us outside. There's a coffee. We can attend the meeting so we can go eat and come back and continue to discuss. That's why I keep using that example. Because it's not an example. Agent. <laughs> the matter is agent. Yes. And that's why I keep asking you that what are and note the questions. What are you happy as an ANC voter, a young ANC voter? Are you happy with the ANC's ANC-led government? Your answer is no. And then I ask you, what are you expecting to see? You're saying this movement on the ground. Yes. Not another conversation. Okay. Not an explanation of how we didn't do well. How do we solve this situation, Otia? And, 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 and I don't want this to come across as me interrogating an ANC person. Yes, 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 because yes. I voted ANC my whole life. It's not even a secret. Well, maybe it is because my vote is my secret. But I'm happy to openly say it. Yes. But I'm trying to understand why a young person like yourself would advocate for an ANC-run ANC government 
So we all understand pe different people's decision making. Yes. How do we solve this problem where there's a drug problem in the in the in the community? Nothing is happening on the ground. When they ask you who are you voting, you're voting for the same people that are supposed to solve it. Yes. How do we? What what happens with that logic? Oh, before I I go back to the question or mm. to answering the question of drug. Mm. I, I would want to touch on this one of saying I would vote the ANC even though I'm not happy okay. with, what they are, the, the, with what they have done over the years. 100%. The reason I'm say, I am saying, I won't say the ANC has done fairly well, it's because of there are issues on a deal that keep on rising. Mm. As much as the ANC can try to solve one problem, tomorrow there will be another problem. Therefore, as a government and as a leader of society, we are constantly confronted with problems. There is no way by, as a leader, you will say, there are no problems. Today I'm relaxing. I, I'm not doing any work. Granted. So me saying I'm happy with what the NC, I'm saying to the NC, relax, don't do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can't put in a position of saying, mm -hmm. the NC must be told that you have not done enough because as a leader, you, you, it's never enough to serve the people. So the NC must continue to work as I had said that there's no department I would give a star because as much as they tried to solve the issue of, of unemployment or of, of small, medium-sized businesses, there is a crisis within solving that problem because the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. You solve one problem, another one comes up. So in all these departments, they, the other one can be the best performing department, but at the end of the day, not all these departments are perfect. Therefore, there's no department that actually get a star. Going back to the issue of drugs, as I had said, we expect Amapanya Panya to be on the ground or law enforcement to be on the ground. Mm. But as much as we will see that uh, activeness by the government of having law enforcement on the ground, after two weeks, the appetite from employees which uh, have been uh, from law enforcement won't be the same as the first day when they started. Why not? We are dealing with human beings. I, I can ask you a simple question. The first day you started at school or, or your, your MBA, the excitement was not the same uh, after six months. It, it was still there, but not equally the same. I, if you're asking me, it got, I, I got more interested. Okay. It didn't go down. It got, it got higher. Yeah. I became an academic <laughs> an suddenly. Academic. I started seeing the world from that perspective. I got more excited, not, not lower. You can't predict how I'm going to react. But at the core of it, and 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 I will I will ask a dumb question: Which team do you support? I'm not a soccer person, but I yeah. Well, there I, must be a team you I like. agree with, with pirates. There you go. You yeah. agree with pirates, uh, and you expect them to continue to perform better, better, yes. not worse. Yes. Because your your theory seems to suggest that the beginning is more exciting than the end, and I say it it's a motivation issue. It's a leadership issue. Yes. It's a coaching issue. It's a infrastructure issue it's a it's a management issue where all of you were excited on day one you're completely demotivated on the last day that's a fundamental management issue so so your theory can work because it assumes that all humans behave the same they start excited they end unexcited your current your theory suggests that i'm a panya panya you're excited first day they got employed right now they don't care uh, you see how that theory can't work? No, it, it can't work. But as a person who, who has been at the workplace before, mm -hmm. I, I, I was trying to, to say, on the first week or first month at work, you are excited because this, this thing is new to you and all that. But as time goes on, you get, you, you get used to the routine. Therefore, now, the excitement is not longer at its peak. It's, it's, it becomes normal. Whose job is it to keep you excited? It's the leadership. Thank you. So we are saying Mr. Pekekele must be in all the township at once. I don't know. To make sure. All I don't those people... know what he's supposed to do. I think he's too, everywhere too much in my opinion. But not he's, got, he's, he's, got, he's got people below him. Yes. It's not his role. He's a police, he's a police minister. He's a political office bearer. He appears too much like a commissioner if you had to ask my opinion yes. on him. I, I love I him. like the guy. Yes. I question his... He's, he appears like he's competing with his commissioners. I, I love what you said now, now. You said he has people below him. Who are leadership, and, who have power. And a number of those people who are, who are below him, let's say, for instance, station commanders. No, commissioners. Commissioners. Yes, don't even go lower down. No, but even commissioners, uh, they can't be in, in all over Gauteng at one time. But they have station commanders. You see how the, okay. the, the structure goes. Let's, go, let's, let's deal with station commanders. Yes. 
um, a number of the station commanders are not political deployment or are not even members of the ANC. I'm glad they're not. Yes. It'll be worse if they were. <laughs> No, think about it. You can't have a police com uh, commander who is a political office bearer. Okay. There are even some who are questioning a, an appointment of a, of a minister to be a political office bearer because they're saying, you know, you're, you're likely to drive a, a wrong narrative, a narrative that suits your political party. You're likely not to arrest certain people because they are part of your political party. You see where that, the problem gets. Okay. So I get you on that one, but I, what I wanted to stress on, on, on these uh, station command, commanders who, who are not political deployment or whatsoever, is that uh, uh, with them not doing their job or not being, com uh, if, uh, being competent or providing enough leadership, you are, you are shifting that blame to the ANC also? No. I'm shifting the blame to leadership. I'm not shifting it to a political party. I'm shifting it to leadership. And it's unfortunate when I get to leadership, I find an ANC-led government. Do you understand that? Yes. I'm shifting it to leadership. leadership. I'm saying the performance of a soccer team, that's bad. I have to move it to leadership. When I get to leadership, I find out, okay, I'm, down. I'm sorry, Bob. You are the guy here. I'm sorry that we found you here. This then, Tate Mashabela, goes to, to my next point. Mm. On all the issues we have raised, that the ANC will come and consult people and we will expect people on the ground the following week. Uh, ANC, ANC employees are at the top of the leadership chain. Damn. But those who interact with workers on a daily are not necessarily members of the ANC. It's, it's rare to find a, a, a political deployment when it comes to supervisors and all those people. These are people we live amongst with in, in our communities. It can be your neighbor and, or your aunt or mm. whoever. Mm. Why, can't, it, it's a, why can't we as the people of South Africa make those people account for some of the issues which are happening in this country and constantly shift the blame to the ANC? Okay, it's a good question. Unfortunately, the fish rots at the head. We know that. Yes. Uh, we, we, we blame them at this level, but we will always point at the highest level because at the highest level, we know who it is. I don't know a supervisor that is looking after city power, yeah. particularly in my area. But I know the minister of electricity because he speaks every day. And, 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 and in my perspective as a, as a citizen, he's appointed and he earns the most money of everyone in that value chain. Yes. He's, if he can solve it, nobody can, in my opinion. Do you understand how simple our perspective is? Yes. I want you to always understand that. So the average South African is not a political consumer of, of content. Yes. We, are, we are the people who experience the political decisions. You understand that? We experience a light that doesn't switch on, a tap that doesn't give us water, we are a, a, a traffic light that doesn't work, garbage that's not collected. At the corner, there's garbage that's just piling up because I won't buy a dump. That's what we experience. The sewerage that's, that's, that's running across your street, that's what we experience. And when we experience that, what do we say? We say Urama pause. We say U -u Watuban, the dancing minister, Usputa. That's what people say. They say Pegitel, Pega, even that his own policemen are, are criminals. We point at the top because at the top, that's where we think decisions are made. That's where we think motivation is made. That's where we expect, where, that's where we expect real problems to be solved. But if you're going to disconnect them, from reality. Help me understand your logic. I'm not disconnecting them, but I love you saying that's where we think. That's where we think. Great. That's where you think. Help me understand the logic of then moving them at a different level. They, they operate at a different level to, to what we experience on a daily basis. If our people understood that these ministers are just placed there to, 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 be, to be liaisons between departments and the parliament and to ensure that all the policies which are in place and the plans are, that are in place are implemented. They would know that they, they, they play far much less, less role in ensuring that the ground is it's working effectively and efficiently on a daily. Hence, it, it, it's easier for, 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 for a president to reshuffle ministers on a daily. Hence, it's also easier for uh, Minister Figile Mbalula to appear as if he's progressive in any department he, he holds as a minister. Because? It's because of, he doesn't really do much of the work. 
the people who are doing the, the real work in there are the, are the DGs, are the DGs, the HOTs, and all the people under. Mm. And a minister, when he's appointed, they are already plans in place. All he has to do is to frustrate, frustrate the process to be implemented faster and quicker. The moment you start to understand that, we will start to holding to hold our brothers and sisters whom we live with on a daily, who work in these government departments accountable. Are you saying, in your example, the role of a minister is not that important? It 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 is important for wow. for, for for political reasons. But when you look into depth into the depth of policies and public work acts, you will realize what this person is just there as the face value more or less as the spokesperson or as a person who, who, who oversees on behalf of parliament or the political part that has deployed him or her. Mm. But in actual fact, the people who are under him, as I had said, the DGs, the HODs, the portfolio committees, are the people who are supposed to be putting the real work and who are actually expected to make sure that they, they, they submit to the office of the minister. This is in line with what parliament has mandated us to do. Just, just for your information, yes. DGs are political appointments. But but carry on. Yes, I'm aware of political appointment, but their role is it's far more uh, hands on than the minister mm. because their role is hence uh, some ministers will be reshuffled and find a certain DG in a department and they, and they, they, they don't get along. Mm. And it's not easy for a minister to remove a DG because it's supposed to be appointed by the president. Exactly. So those are the dynamics which are in place. That's how how nice the policies of South Africa are, are created. Then how should an average everyday citizen of the country experience that that you've just you've just described, where minister of water, his job is to liaise, his job is to connect parliament with 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 the department, his job is to speak on behalf of. How does how should a South African citizen experience this thing? I'm I'm, I'm worried that you will shift the blame to my aunt, who is an administrator in the department. I'm not really sh I'm not really shifting a blame to your aunt, uh. but in that the Mashabela. The, the, I'm, I'm, I'm against the narrative that everything that is failing on and falling apart on the ground and on the ground, it's largely uh, on the ANC's hand. You go to our clinics, mm. there's a shortage of medication. You will realize the nurse is stealing those panadols for her own use. They will say mm. the ANC is stealing money, medications are not being borrowed. Mm. Therefore, we need to start a conversation whereby we need to make people who are public servants and public who are public servants in all these institutions to start to be accountable. Because everything now is about the NC. Anything that is wrong, it's the NC. We blame them for the hail. Yes. Yeah. You those see, things that if a nurse is rude at a clinic, it's the ANC. Makshi, the, sir. It's the ANC. <laughs> so that's the narrative. That narrative has made all these political parties or political leaders to take chances in trying to get their hands on the cookie jar also. Mm. Because they see what there is a gap there, the, everything that is wrong, the ANC. And every political party that is formed in this country, the first thing, they won't finish a statement without mentioning the ANC. Mm. That's true. You, you can tell these, these leaders are not really, really here to serve their people. They, are, they, they, don't, they don't really have an idea okay. or, on what they want to achieve or they don't, they, are not, they don't really have the interest of the people at heart. All they are pushing is to blame the NC on everything. Let's, let's talk about my aunt who works at a, as a nurse, uh, who's stealing uh, Ama Panat. How do we solve that? And, and connect it to politics, if you don't mind. If, if you are capable. Yes. Yeah. How do we solve this nurse's situation? And, you, and, and, and it's prevalence because it's everywhere. There are, there are no systems in place mm. to evaluate workers' performance. In, I assume maybe there are, but they are not being used. Chances are there, they're there. Yeah. But it's, yeah. We, we, they are not used effectively. Mm -hmm. You need to monitor at the, crowd, at, at the ground level, engage with these people who go to these clinics. Mm. Are you receiving your medication on time? Is, is everything fine? Because what I have realized and picked up is that the medication that is, is prescribed directly from Tate Mashabe, like the likes of Bo, uh, medication of Abantaba Fitzayo, mm. and ARVs. Those me, those, that, that medication is no longer uh, missing in our clinics. Mm. There's no longer a shortage of those medications because of the government has created a way to make sure if there is one missing, well, someone must account for, the, for, for, those, for those medications. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to general things such as Amapanado, which are just brought as a, as a pile and just do stock taking. Mm -hmm. There are no systems in place 
to make people account for that. Or we are saying, I'm a panado What happened to those panados? Mm -hmm. There are no system in place to deal with those issues. So if the ANC uh, government and all those other employees who are responsible for those things, who are who who, who have been hired by the Department of Health outside of political uh, affairs and everything, were able to do those things and to strategically uh, implement them and, and and enforce them on the ground level, we wouldn't be having such problems. Are you saying that most of the challenges that our country is facing currently, the blame or the finger should be pointed at those that administer the tools, not those that oversee the, the application of those tools. I believe it's both. They should both, because both of them, they have a role to play. Mm. But what has happened over there is that the blame has been largely shifted to those who In one direction. Yeah. But those who admis, administer the tools are not, are not being taken into accountability enough. And those, most of those people are people whom we live with in our, in our, in our areas are people we drink with, we chill with, we hang out with. The culture that you describe, because it's a culture, if it's prevalent, it's, you find everywhere. Mm. It's how we operate as a society. That culture of where do you think it comes from? It comes from ignorance. From uh, it, it comes from seeing an opportunity because you saw an opportunity mm. that uh, the person who's supposed to oversee what I'm doing, which as in your case, you're saying ministers, mm. DDGs, people who are appointed have to oversee, are not doing enough in overseeing. So I can easily steal and not be caught. Mm. So or be caught, but not nothing happens. Don't be prosecuted yes, and so forth. And so forth. Yeah. So that, that's where it starts. And it, it also, it has even gotten worse with knowing where, even if this we mess up this clinic, because you're, you're to an ANC. You understand? So mm. we can do as we want. Have you realized when a, a, a public official goes into an area, it becomes functional and well and, and, and operates well. Mm. That for should, that few hours. For, that should tell you these, they, these people are capable of doing this, this thing. Mine's an amaboom. Mine's an amaboom. And there are policies in place that guides them on how to, to perform and, and on how to operate. And can I please give you this example? I love that we focused on this thing clinic. So mm. I was privileged to, to, to go in this... Uh, do you know our case almost? Mm. So we are there, we are chilling with, with this one, with one of these nurses. So one of the, the patient is misbehaving, refuses to take pills and to eat, to go to his room. He's, he's, he's rebelling. Mm. This lady is a nurse, he's chilling with us. He says, do you know that if I was at the public hospital, I would have just dragged him to his room. But I can't do it here because of this patient who's going to go and report me mm. and I will have to account for why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And there will be disciplinary measures that will be taken against me. Mm -hmm. What I had picked up from that conversation is that people, there are no systems in place from government that will allow the people that were the citizens of this country to complain, even though the service is free. But there are no systems in place that, that will allow people to complain about the service they are receiving from government servants. Mm -hmm. We know it's free, but there are no systems in place that will allow them to complain that this service is not fair. Mm. This nurse is a root. This and this is happening. There are no systems in place. If we can have such systems in place, we wouldn't be having such incompetence that are happening in our clinic on a daily and only see competent, uh, uh, effective ways of working in clinics only when an MMC of, of, of health comes there. Mm. So you can tell, Hore, we, we still have a, lot, a long way to go. And if we don't hold each other accountable, we are, we, are, we are still going to have a crisis. And the blame will continue to fall on the hands of the ANC if it doesn't do anything about that. How is it that the ANC get, gets all the blame? Not only that they're in power, yes. but how is it that you get all the blame? If you're, you're a guy who is a father of a household, you take your kids to school, you pay their school fees, you, the house always has lights, there's food in the fridge. Why would anyone ever blame you? For anything, why is it that the ANC happens to find themselves in this in this weird position where everybody just says, "Hi ANC, let's steal." They'll blame the ANC. Why would they even begin to blame the ANC if they have nothing to be blamed for? As as you had said to me earlier on, Hori, psychologically we assume that the minister, everyone, the one at the top, is the one responsible for whatever that is happening at the bottom. 
which in our case are, it's political deployment, which happens to be members of the ANC. Mm. And outside of that is that our people are not familiar with government governance processes on who to hold accountable for certain things. And that, they'll never be. Yes. Mm. And another one is that the ANC on its own, it doesn't have effective communication, communicating machinery. There is a government communicating machinery to say, Ro, now we, have, we are playing our part, mm. but we are finding difficulties with the people we hire who happen to be other citizens of South Africa. Mm. And even in, private, in the private sector, companies are having such problems of having employees who steal and do all those things which are not in line with the company. Mm. So if the NC is able to, the NC led government is able to communicate effectively the work that it does and also publicly admits its own failures because they have a tendency of admitting towards elections that mm. we know we have failed here. But for the last four years, they haven't been admitting anything. They haven't been showing the work, the beautiful the work they have been doing. They only start showing it towards election season. This thing is supposed to be a culture. Mm. Putting people hands on, be transparent, as they say. They, we are a transparent government. We account, we account to our people. That thing must happen on a daily if transparency and accountability is happening on a daily from, from the top level until the bottom, every day, not on, on election season, mm. we won't be having a confused society that will continue to blame the NC for every little thing that is happening. What type of uh, South Africa do you wish for? I wish for a, for a progressive South Africa. A South Africa that is, is guided by the principles of Ubuntu. A South Africa that our grandmothers and grandfathers used to tell us about the, the, you know, those loving household. That's the South Africa I wish for. Mm. Not a South Africa that seeks on fighting one another, seeks on blame, of, of, of blaming one another on issues. No, and most importantly, not a South Africa that is selfish mm. because the number of our people are selfish and self-centered. All they care about is themselves. And we can't build a nation with that mindset. Mm. Where, where did we get that? Something must have changed because you're saying your grandmother and I used to tell you about that. So clearly we had it at some point. I think greed has taken over. Where did we see it? We must have seen someone doing it. The question should be who introduced us to greed, to, to being greedy, mm. to all constantly wanting more. Once we got introduced, we started doing it. We started doing it because you must remember in, in a system, you're not the only person who can say, who, who, you're not the only person in mm -hmm. a system. Let's say we're in a system that consists of five people. Mm -hmm. If you're approached and told that, you know, you can make more money if you do this. Mm -hmm. Even if your principles are say, are say no, you can say no, but they can easily go to the next person and that person can easily agree. So that means the, there must be available resources for us to be greedy over. Then you can't be greedy if there's nothing. Yes. You can't be greedy in poverty. There's nothing to be greedy about. As there's no food here. So that means something must be on the table for us to be greedy about this thing. Where do we see that? Is there any environment like that in society where there's something on the table and then we are taking it and we are not supposed to? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot on this one. I don't know. Actually, I'm 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 curious to know how you see the world. You, you know that the Mashabela. If we are sitting here and mm. this thing is it's in the table, we, yes. don't, we don't even know what it is. Nah, we know, Chief. Don't complicate okay. it. We know. Okay, let's see. It's it's there. We don't see a need for us to take more than we are supposed to take. Because we're already getting a salary. Yes. Yeah. To do to look at it. Uh, to look at it. It's yeah. there. Yeah. We don't see a need for us to take it. We have our own salaries. Yeah. We are fine with the way things are. But someone walks in and say, hey, my to man, hey, it seems like you're missing out. Mm. You know, through now where, we, where I come from, we take this thing for ourselves mm. and share it amongst ourselves. Mm. And what is left, we give it to those who are supposed to get it. Mm. The problem didn't start with me and you. They are the person who came with the, who came in that door and drilled the, the, the idea of us who of or the idea that we can easily share this thing mm. is the problem. <laughs> Our only failure was allowing him to get the better of us. Yeah, but you can't then say that's not a problem. And you I'm, can't measure the problems on 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 levels and say his his coming into the room is a bigger problem than us taking it. No, why am I saying this? Yeah. All along we've been looking at this thing. We don't even care about it. We know we need to just look at it. It's fine. Uh. 
we have our own things i don't know how to do mm. but when you came with your you silly tendencies here and try to convince us that no man we can take this thing the problem with your your analogy is that it 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 puts blame on the person who suggested but not blame on the person who actually did the act and therein lies the challenge yet in, in criminal law yes conspiracy is is just as 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 an offense as the act that you did however in this context you realize that the act is equally as as a, a liable to the punishment if ever there is any punishment of taking this thing hence i said to you the first person who must blame is the one that came and came with the idea and also blame yeah. ourselves for failing to resist the temptation absolutely Please. you can't ignore that and the moment we we fail to resist the temptation and take this thing uh uh someone else will also want to come and have his fair share because now we have raised the bar mm. of 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 being well off yes because the moment now i saying the male pa yana me na me ngifuna ukulingana nayo out time because we were at the same level so mm. so why now so we work pelo pezu now i also want to take that's where corruption all started but who introduced it to us <laughs> you know why i love because you seem to hold on to the person that came in and said asi tat than the people who took it <laughs> your, your 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 story if it was you had to conclude and you did mm. you wrote the last line mm. the last line of that submission was but who you know, person that introduced this thing is it right to you know i say who yeah. it's because in this we, we live in a south africa that says uh, it, white people are better at administering things i don't know that more more more, more than black people abantu ba if black people are doing ah ba chonchi kanga you see those yeah, I've, i've heard that yes. but, but to... so ngifuna even even the, the the viewer at home to to remember that kuthi ba fethu man as much as we eat manja aba aba in the forefront of this thing mm. of corruption someone came in even now there's someone who is still saying lungelo i push out here mina uzongivala ngendlela yabo i don't know how to get my hands dirty yeah hence kuba yitha bodaki aba abakhlalithi wayo aba corrupt they can't administer they can't lead properly things go missing but if there are white people in the mix hey hey kabe things are fine that's not true is, is there a problem in our inability to resist temptation the 10 commandments of the bible I'm, i'm i'm not a church person so. yeah, i'm highlighting yes. the lord's prayer yes. the lord's prayer you know that one that starts with our father oh okay it so speaks the, of temptation temptation yes. it it becomes a a tricky thing mm. if you are you are coming from a, a a background of full of poverty you must remember we we come from a bardate okay. a high number of our people who are hungry Mo, almost everyone almost everyone yeah so if you are give you, you you propose this thing of corruption in a more glorified way in a more polished way how how, how can i resist temptation because i want a better life for myself democratic democracy which was promised to us said everyone will be fine mm. so if if we, if they said everyone will be fine that means i'm the first person they were speaking about mm. therefore i will eat the first generation of uh, high achievers e, so here's an opportunity and that this is what they, they, they promised us when they spoke about democracy mm. and here is this way this one person is is coming with corruption in in a, in a bag he has decorated it properly he's telling me you know this is not real corruption this is how it works over time when you we open the bag realize this is corruption this is that i shouldn't have taken this i shouldn't thing. have taken this thing. you're saying you you did it not knowing that you were doing wrong hence i said the person came with a bag with the decorated <laughs> present which has corruption inside yeah but and when we, you took it we took it because we we in my fool yeah man corruption but you and it's it's go the move yeah go the pambi the you can you, you can return it thank you ah you can but it's fine let's assume you can <laughs> <laughs> now you're caught up in the situation yeah. here's something that that you said and i want to I'm, i'm driving towards concluding where you said um, they said your life will get better they didn't they said all our lives will get better the slogan 1994 yes, yes. election said a better yes. life for all better even now yes. in south africa together exactly everyone. everyone it's not for the few it's not for the exclusive if me and now we have this thing here we are looking at it every day we know that it's supposed to improve the lives of our people and we do nothing instead we are happy to return it back and say sorry we didn't use it this year 
Where is the problem there? Because we are saying that ignore corruption. It's a, it's a plague in our system. It's a yes. crisis. Where is the problem there with this person? Whether administration, administrator or political office bearer, because you agreed that DGs are political office bearers. These are CEOs of departments. Yes, yes. They are the ultimate. Uh, if if the, the the minister is spokesperson, is the face. Yes. The DG is the CEO. Where is the problem there in your in your observation? Uh, my problem is with the administrator, the DG. Mm, no, not necessarily DG. Ah, chief. It's okay. signs. Okay, the let, DG signs. Let's say the DG. Yes. But before it arrives at the DG, we we have all these people who are holding strategic position, the DDGs of what what accounting what what. We have all these nice committees, the likes of the committee that, that are responsible of planning, portfolio committee, and all those committees. Mm. And if you if if you look at the center of the, of these committees, a whole lot of people who form part of the planning when it comes to programs of government. Are people with big education, uh, uh, mm. PhDs and all, you would expect that they will be competent enough to plan programs that will be implementable and that will yield positive results for our people. Mm. But you, you realize, what, no. And you expect them to, to plan programs that are in line with the policy that is guiding them when it comes to procuring money, when it comes to enrollment. But no. Hence, you, you, you realize at the end of the financial year, the department has to take money back to Treasury. Mm. It's because of when they were planning, their plan was not in line with what the act of what, what is saying. It was not in line with the policy that they are supposed to be guided with. Hence, who, who has to ultimately account? It goes back to the head, as you're saying, and the DG. Do you know why? Please tell me. Not. You are the father of the house. I can't blame the kids for a dysfunctional home. So let's I say, can't. I don't. If your <laughs> child uses drugs and they're sixteen, yeah. I can't blame the child. I start with you. Yeah, what this, kind of household are you managing? Yeah, this this child thing is too much now. No, let, but you say, understand it. Yeah, I get you. I can't for a second. It's your job as a father to discipline your child. If there's a there's a there's a a, a, a person who works within your department, they're not doing their job. They are not a political office bearer. It's an administrator with a PhD. They're not doing their job. They have KPS. They have key performance indicators. They have to see. We have to say, not you were meant to take this thing and put it here by end of the week. End of the week, it's still where it was. I fully agree with you on that. What do we do? <laughs> that, that's one of the things the ANZ government needs to improve on in making sure that people account and they deal with people harshly if it, they don't deliver results. It's 30 it's years almost. It's, it's, it's 30 years. When do we say we now know as an ANC government, we now know how to govern? Do how many more years do we need? Do you, do, you, do you really think that in a world that is constantly uh, transforming and changing, we will really, a, a, a government will be able to say, now I know how to govern? Okay. Okay. That's a fair point. But when do we get to a point where we say, now we have an idea? The ANC has an idea. Now we figured this thing out. The, the ANC government has an idea. Uh, there are a whole lot of things that are beautiful that are happening in this country. Tell me two and then we conclude. Besides uh, uh, continuing to give our people free money. Okay. Because that's a, there's a problem there on its own that I don't want to get into. You said we should empower people and make them entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Am I empowering you if I keep you keep giving you free money? No, no, not at all. That's, that's fine. Let's leave that. Let's leave that one. You know, the, the government of this country always listens to complaints. Or at some point, they were saying kids in China are able to fix phones at a very young age. They're mm. able to, in Rwanda, there is a cell phone plant. In what, 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 what. Do you know that in South Africa, we do have those things? Mm. But because of the government is, is, is failing to communicate and to share its own achievement with the people of South Africa, you, you, you will think they are not there. Okay. Tell me the second thing. The second thing, Establishments, uh, we, we have a uh, bar two and... Can't give bar two credit. Can't give ANC credit. I, no, that. I'm not giving that. Yeah. I, I'm trying to explain something. Uh, between bar two and trip, one of these uh, companies were assisted by the IDC to make sure or they have stores across a number of malls mm. across the country. Mm. This tells you that the, the, the ANC government is, is investing in young people who are interested in playing in the mainstream of, of retail. Mm. You know, the IDC doesn't give free money, right? 
but it assists with funds. Yeah, but and it's also not free money. It, it, it retrieves it back, but over over time, you you will progress and take it back. Mm. That's that's another form of assisting. Even though we are going to pay it back, but we see potential in you. Do you know how much how much uh, IDC is in court trying to get most of the money that they've given, and they're not giving they're not getting it back because there are people who are not able to pay that money back. No, Some no. would say it's that's not a success story. If you look at IDC, not Drip or yes, yes, yes. or Bat, when you look IDC, at IDC on its own, on its own, and 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 other organizations similar to it, the biggest challenge we have is that those businesses that have been formed are unable to pay back the money. There's one example of a of a former a sports administrator, very senior a sports administrator, and she's a lady who used to own a soccer team. Even now, struggles to pay back. There's a a, a, a very famous radio presenter who even now struggles to pay back money got from the IDC. So the point I'm making is, is it a success story? The fact that you, uh, Lungel, will get money to go start a business, you fail. And your failure is so disastrous that you can't even pay back that loan. Thank you for that one. But what we are missing in this one, Tate Mashaven, mm-hmm. I love, I love the, the, the example you've raised, is that the ANC government is able to take risks and gamble, <laughs> with, gamble. With, 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 tax, with, with, with taxpayers' money and say we are going to give this and Tate Mashaven a, a, a try on this one. He has potential. Mm. That's, the, that's the country the ANC government has built. Yeah. In saying we are going to give a chance to each and every person who, who, who has an idea, who, who seems like he has potential. Mm. That's the nc led government. You, it's rare to find such a thing. I want you to conclude it by telling us in a concluding statement why other people must vote for the ANC. And that's the concluding statement. I'm done talking. Thank you. This has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that the ANC government has done over the years. Mm. The ANC failing to communicate the work that it has done for our people has brought them to where they are now. But if you go into our respective townships in our rural areas, a lot has happened. We cannot just allow people, few individuals, to dent the great work that the ANC has done. It has failed here and there, and it has it, it, it has created a whole number of national crises, such as the load shading. But uh, even ourselves as the people, we need to try by all means to hold each other accountable. And the last thing, the dangers of voting out the ANC is that power shift is not nice. If we are saying we want to go into collusion uh, at the national level, it's going to be a disaster in this country. Mm. A typical example, if we are a worker and the company is sold to someone else, the, the changes that are being brought into the company are drastic and are, affects workers largely more than the company or the management on its own. That's where you want us to go. No, I, I, I doubt our municipalities are collapsing on a daily. Nothing has changed. Nothing much has been done mm. in that regard. So when you decide to go and vote and you say you want to vote, vote out the ANC, I really need you to be able to give ground uh, reasons that are solid beyond what you are being fed by all these other political parties. Mm. There is a lot to lose for us as the people of South Africa if we are to vote out the ANC government at the national level. Mm. Municipalities not working. So we are everywhere. So our nature one is back. It's a mess. You want that crisis to be a national crisis? I don't think so. Uma Marco who still stays in rural areas, it's going to be worse for them. Mm. You just because of you, you are staying in Santin, having it nice. Things are going to change. Mm. So remember that. Be mindful of that. Go through the manifestos of all these organizations and see whether they are they are achievable or not. I like you, Lungelo. I think your, I think your future is bright. Thank you, Ndadema. There's a lot of people who won't agree with a lot of the things you said today. It's their business. We don't see the world the same way. And I'm glad you came. Uh, I'll always continue to have a chat with you because I think where you're going is bright. Uh, when I first met you, I knew that. And, I, and now you are in my world of communication because that's my passion. And I say to you, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, have an open mind about things. Uh, and, and, and you will evolve. You're a young person. You'll always see the world differently. Trust me, I see the world differently on a lot of factors. So that's why I say to you, carry on doing what you're doing. 
your passion for South Africa and its future is, is amazing. And there are very few young people who are interested like you are. And that is probably the reason why I invited you here. So thank you very much. I thank you, Tate Mashabela, for giving me the opportunity. It's grand. Thank you. Thank you. There he is, eh? the future president of this country, Ulungelo uh, Mabulu, from uh, the East, <laughs> the East Rand. Towards Eden Park. All. Sharp. Thank you very much. I hope you watched till the end. Eh? It was a lot of fun. King King David Studio Podcast.